Public Works Committee meeting to order. Adam, the roll, please. Greer. I'm here. Kane. I'm here. Gallops. Lady Colts. Yep. Rogers. We're good. Okay, we have a quorum. We should have received the agenda for this evening's meeting. Anybody see any changes or want to make a motion to approve? So moved. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have an agenda. Public communications and comment. No one is in the room. Anyone else? All right. In your packet, you should have received the meeting minutes from January 14th of 2021. Hopefully you've had time to review those. And with that, motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Second. Sage. And then a Jeff. comment. I realize it was last month I wasn't here. Maybe you talked about it, but any reason why you wouldn't let these tickets come out of the city hall here? I mean, making it easier on citizens to. We can talk about that too. We do have a, a city a dump update okay. on okay. the agenda. So. Okay. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of January 14, 2021. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. We have three discussion items, and if it, if it be the will of the body, we'd like to move item C first. There is a... No, B, B first. Or, or B. I'm so sorry, I made the wrong arrow. We'd like to move B up to first on the agenda. We have a young lady from Green Lake that uh, we'll be calling in for uh, that. That is the item, the Make downtown sure catch basin project. So I'll put Jen's speaker, okay? We're in the meeting. I guess so. If you want to. Did I call her one? I think we already only had them on color now. So we handed out your. your uh, Storm drain bureau proposal. So if you just kind of Jennifer wanna um, give the lowdown on what you're thinking. Uh, yeah. So what we're thinking is um, doing a few of these storm drain murals, uh, hopefully uh, in downtown Ribbon. Um, you know, storm drains can be like illicit dumping sites, and people also don't realize that all the water that goes down storm drains um, isn't treated before it makes its way to a stream um, that flows through Green Lake. So we've done the storm drain stenciling and resin before, but uh, the storm drain murals are a little bit more eye-catching. They're aesthetically pleasing. You know, they add art uh, and they're educational. All right, any questions? <clears throat> Can, if you're gonna, Spend the time to decorate around a drain. I see one of them is painted. Does it make any sense to take the rust off of some of the, the wherever else you do it and paint those too, or leave them? Do something to make them rust free. I've always wondered about storm drains. Uh, why they just they just install them a week later they're rusty already. You know, cast iron. Yeah. But I mean, can't you treat it with something that that wouldn't happen? No, that'll okay. just wear off. How many are you looking at doing? Um, potentially three. I would say probably around three. Because we're, we're doing um, quite a few in Green Lake. So originally I was thinking there would be like four, maybe in Green Lake and four in Ripon. Um, but I think more might be done in Green Lake now. So probably like two or three in Ripon if possible. I think it's a fun idea, and I think it's... Yeah, it adds a lot of life yeah. to a, a dull-looking sidewalk at times. And all the maintenance and upkeep and touch-ups and possible removal, if necessary, is the responsibility of your organization, correct?
Lake Association has total approval of what's what the mural looks like? Well, Jennifer, thank you for the information. Thank you for your time, and Adam will certainly uh, keep you posted as this um, <coughs> this proposal um, moves through the city. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I appreciate you uh, taking the time to let me speak over the phone, and hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Thanks. So it would seem that there is consensus to look at this further. Okay. I would think, mm -hmm. you know, it would not be something that um, would, would pay to see what their designs would be yeah. prior to okay. moving it forward. Do you want us to and, work And locations, him? Mike, I would think. Do you want us to take that to council then? or bring it back here? If there's a consensus from this committee to bring it to council, I would say okay. we take it to council. Okay. So we'll work with them to get the design and the location set and bring it to council. Yeah. You think? Okay. okay. All right. Anything further on the catch basin project? All right, now we can move up to item A, sidewalk replacement program update and discussion. Mike has a PowerPoint presentation. Why don't you can pick, I just printed these because, um, easier to look at. Because I, we weren't sure we could get this going. So, So one of the things that um, when I first came here, um, we were doing um, replacement um, only um, within the city. I noticed in the past there was um, grinding done also. So I uh, reached out to um, Safe Steps here and um, they have a nice program here. And we'll just step through that. First we'll talk about um, the current state uh, so the current state is that uh, the budgeted cost um, that's in the public works budget is $25,000 a year. This is a minimum cost uh, to satisfy our insurance company. With that, right now there's an ordinance that uh, the city pays the 50% and the homeowner pays 50%. Is that a, a linear foot or what? It's just whatever's on that property. By linear feet though, right? I mean, well, if someone has a 100 foot lot, someone has a 200 foot lot, they're going to pay yeah, prices. Yeah, that way, yes. Okay. And some are wider oh, okay. than right. others, and that's why I was. Oh, so it's a square foot. It's square foot, gotcha. Okay. 
Um, so the vendor for them provided us some information and they just literally came up with um, this project uh, site. Let's see if I can get that thing to work correctly. So it's hard for you to see here, but over on the left side here, there's two pictures. There's a before picture and an after picture of Grundy. Okay. Um, it also over here tells the size of the area. And then over here, it states the cost of the grinding on this particular one was $51. 50% uh, would be the 2550 uh, homeowner responsibility. The replacement cost, if this was replaced, would have been $237.60. So where they can grind, they're saving the resident money um, for that. And then they add in um, also the they define the replacement areas and and I can change whatever we want if we want it grown if we want it replaced um, or anything like that. They go with uh, they use this is this would be live data, so when they grind, they're out there. They're taking a picture and it's uploaded right to the site, and you can actually see. Well, for the grinding, okay. So, go back to this then. And that site is literally a month old or two months old. They just developed that. So, what you'll see on Safe Steps. Um, executive summary if you had a chance to look at it by looking at that will never move the city forward um, at this level of spending um, it, it's just not feasible to make your way around and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit um, current operation is allowing further uh, deterioration that leads to more costs so what we don't fix now it's going to cost more obviously in years to come. We also don't get very good pricing at $25,000 um, where you lump it in with a bunch of work you're going to get some better pricing. Um, I see complaints out there on conditions of sidewalk throughout the city. Um, I see walkers in the road because I, I, I don't know why but I suspect maybe because the sidewalks are not that good of shape. Or non-existent. Yeah. Or, or non-existent, yeah. So if you if you look at the safe step executive summary, it'll outline everything in there. Um, what we did in 21, um, we had wanted to do about 5.4 um, miles of sidewalk. We ended up doing 1.8. And the total cost um, for saw cutting was $13,000. The cost for replacing this would have been $46,000. So there was a savings of $32,000, um, if you will, a savings. We progressed farther than we would have with, from the replacement. And then on the map, if you look what was done, on the next page, mm -hmm. and you look at, and I can do that right here. So as you can see here, I had some areas, people call in complain um, about their sidewalks. I add them to the list and we go ahead and fix them. Um, of course, and we did some here just down way right across the street here a little bit. And then in a couple spotty other ones here, but that was the main section that we did. Um, 
one small section like this. Both sides, right? No. One side, I did this side, other side the year before. Yep. So the numbers were presented on here. We, I think this is pretty amazing is uh, we do have uh, 47 miles of sidewalk. So we had 1.8 miles every year. Um, it's going to take 20 plus years to circle back around. By then, you're not going to be in any better shape. So, what were, and Anna will elaborate on things too, we've been having some discussion on this. So what we're proposing is um, the property owner to pay 100%, um, perhaps do a, a quarter of the city every year. Um, the process it becomes more predictable um, for the residents and have an option of the property owner have to pay that within every year for three years or something like that. We also did have a discussion of um, capping um, the dollar amount for the property to not burden um, the residents. Those were some of the things that we were thinking about, if you want to elaborate Yeah, and, 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 and other communities do it different ways, but the way we are currently doing it never allows the city to, to get the best price, to, to get anything caught up that needs to be caught up, um, and ultimately um, it could cost the residents way more long term with replacements because replacements are four, five, six times more expensive than a grind or any other kind of lesser maintenance. So, you know, at this point, when we're saying we're spending $25,000, really we're budgeting $12,500 yeah. or so every year out of general fund money to, to, do, to, to address $8 million worth of sidewalks in our community. Um, we are obviously, we understand that 50-50 you know, going and increasing that share is, a, is, a, is a, a cost burden on the resident. Well, how we're doing it now is a cost burden on the resident because we're not doing enough. Um, in my previous community and looking at how others do it, you know, we split the town up and did one section one year, the next section the next year. We bid out concrete work every year or every other year. So you locked in a contracted price for removals. You then had grinds as well. We worked with Safe Step, they come in um, they, they grind, it's generally cheaper. The more work they have, the less it costs worker, the, the residents as well. So um, if we were to say, take the city and divide it into four sections and say that, yep, one person does have a bunch of replace and removals and it, say it's $600, okay, they're in year one. You know, they can pay for that. You can put them on a payment plan and pay for it on their tax bill over three, four years and and not have that $600 or whatever it is burden them right off the bat. On top of then, you do section one, two, three, four. I'm just going to predict this because of past experience. By the time you're the second time around, you're now not doing a lot of anything because you're caught up. And and the, the cost to the resident is, is less because of those couple years of catching up. Um, and then it becomes a lot more manageable where you can even do half the town, you know, every other year or half the town every, every other year or whatever you want to do to, you know, because you're caught up. But under the current, under the current approach, um, we're, without, without drastically increasing that budget line item by tens of thousands of dollars, this will never get better. And, um, and it just was one thing that Mike and I were talking about and Safe Step happened to come up with this at this time and I saw it and I'm like, yeah, Mike, what are we doing for sidewalks this year? And I look at the map and it's one, it's three blocks on one street and, and we have many blocks on many streets. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's why we, we kind of talked about it and wanted to bring it up. So, so how long conceivably would this last? 10 years? 
uh, in front of a house? I mean, never, you know, for sure. But uh, I would say they're going to last probably 20. Um, if you have a tree that grows right. in 20 course, years, it's going to put a burden on to that, that particular spot. So why not offer the financing? Um, it's hard Tender. to say because the ground moves, things move around, but cement is almost a, a permanent. Um, so why, why put the financing burden if someone is on a fixed income over three, why not give them 10? The, the three year thing is pretty common when paying off things because you know we're fronting that money on top of if there's a property transaction and it's out there, now all of a sudden the next person, I mean, you, 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 there's the, the overall cost, you know, especially if there's a cap, um, you know, an average replacement is a, a few hundred dollars at most for a couple sidewalks. I, I don't know what it is or what it was this year, um, but a grind is 50 bucks, you know. I mean, I, I think in front of them, the last time it was done in front of my house, the bill was $256, and that was one replacement and two grinds, maybe. Yeah, we had so. two grinds last year, and I think we paid $54 or so, or three grinds. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And taking it out multiple years is just a tracking situation. You know, I mean, we have to assess it directly to the property owner every year with their tax bill to ensure that it does get paid. <clears throat> so taking it out, you know, 10 years um, could be a bit of a, you know, and, and we could work within a, if you, if you set it at a maximum of something, we can work with the property owner to come to terms with some point, but at some point taking it out so long it just becomes a, you know. Some, some people would just go, hey, you know, it's a seven dollars a year for ten. What would I, what would I do that for? Yeah. But some people on a very fixed income. I mean, I'll just throw a little bit of historic perspective on sidewalks in this community. And when I was on the council a hundred years ago, eighty nine to ninety four, I don't remember what year or two, but the sidewalk issue was just contentious, and the council was split right down the middle. Who should pay for them? I don't even want them. If they're on my side, if you put them on my side, put them on the other, don't put them on any side. It was really, really, really tense. And um, and so there's going to be people, I'm sure, well, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I suspect some people will come out of the woodwork and say, I never wanted these in the first place when you're duking it out in 92 or 93. Oh, sure. And, uh, and here now you go again, billing me for something I never wanted. I mean, I'm just, I understand why you want to do this. You also have a safety component and you want to keep the city in better shape. But that's part of my idea about giving some people the option. It probably wouldn't come up that often, but give some people the option that find it really painful for a relatively monetary reason or even a psychological one, even a little longer if they want it. It probably wouldn't be that many people. And I realized Adam, okay, that's a bookkeeping pain and all that sort of thing. And you might even have to borrow money to do that. But. Well, right now there's no, like, we were responsible for 50% and we had to pay that. There was no payment plan option, I don't think. Was there was there? no payment plan option. Right, so 50% so all up front for the same sidewalk repairs that 100% spread over three years. You know, it's, it's, it's more money, but it's not more money up front, which is where I think, you know, that's the hardest, if, especially if you've got big repairs, you're on a fixed income. You know, getting yeah. a full so so I don't see. You and know, from that perspective. Now I do see I do see it being a concern that's that's voiced, but mm -hmm. it's more affordable in the moment than paying fifty percent, mm -hmm. and then and then having a sidewalk that's you know going to deteriorate over 15, 20 years. Um, and then, ideally, it's never, you know, the goal is to never have it that expensive every four years, right? That's because correct. you're, yeah, so. so. We might even, I mean, when Adam brought up, we might skip a year. Yeah. Or two or something, you know, um, when things get better. But um, they've deteriorated so far. Um, we just will never, never make progress yeah. at this level. I, I do like the <clears throat> the idea of the cap mm -hmm. for yeah I think you know for certain you know for situations I, I think that levels the playing yeah. field for them mm -hmm. too so like corner lots or like over um, yep. on is it Woodside no um, Ransom and what's it the big house that's kind of on a three way corner there the White House yeah so is that 
Would that be capped per street or per property? It's per property. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because that's where I see, you know, a corner they lot. Because own that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So with a corner lot, you you got a lot of sidewalk. Yeah. You know, on some of those, so it can add up um, for that. And the other piece of this that I talked to Adam about is, is we, if it went this way, we still want to keep that money in the budget, the $25,000, because the city's got our, their own stuff to do. Yeah. And we uh, need to step forward and, and take care of our um, properties also. Yeah. So um, that still needs to stay in there. It's not going to disappear. Right. So I want to put that out there. Okay. Too. So it, it just I'm not very well educated on sidewalk <laughs> health. Is it health, the health of the sidewalk? Like we had some spots that were just they just ground. had to be ground yeah yep. so and we, we don't have trees or anything but in theory if a spot's being ground down that's ideally going to prolong the health of that portion of sidewalk correct because there's no yeah it'll make it safer for the person walking so um what i defined uh, initially uh when the company came in is we did a walkthrough mm -hmm. and we defined anything that's a half inch or larger, okay? okay? Um, because if I went any smaller, we, would, we wouldn't get very far there. Yeah. Um, so they got a no-go gauge, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, they check it. Anything half inch or bigger uh, is gonna be grown. Is salt damage any more so after that? I haven't seen salt damage on, on them that much. I see uh, more cooling and, and sinking uh, areas, and that's where your, you know, that and your um, cracking um, are the two things that we really hit. The trees, when they push them up uh, extensively, um, those probably would be repaired. Uh, they come in and they cut the roots and re-level that back off. So um, I think those are most of the things that we see. Some of them, some of the sidewalks are older, um, but you know if they don't have that pooling or those lips, there's there's no reason to replace them. Mm -hmm. oh, I get that. And, and the property owner, I believe, under current ordinance, do, does have the right to cure any issue. And the fact is, is none of them really do because it's more cost effective to just take the 50% than so there's, there's, We there's, do offer you know. when you get the letter mm -hmm. um, to fix it yourself. Um, I've had one person do that and grind his own, um, but I don't know why anybody would even go down that road. I'm for that so, <laughs> Actually, I did. Now that you mention it, <laughs> well, oh, was, you were that one. You. Well, I never got assessed, but I, but I slabs are catching my snow shovel, and I'm like, that's enough of that. So I had Polish come out one the next summer, and I think it was in '08. And now that you're talking about the salt; it hasn't changed anything. No. He took we. I probably fixed about six or eight edges, and mm -hmm. I guess salt hasn't done anything to it now. Now that, you, now that I think about it. So this, this is a discussion item tonight. So mm -hmm. consequently, there'll be more information coming forward. And if you would like us to put a plan together, um, we can do that. If, you know, um, and then come back again. Um, I don't know what the next step would be. It's just a discussion. Your thoughts, Adam, on that? Um, Obviously, this is what, 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 what Mike and I discussed was this. This information is fresh on our minds because it just happened. Mm -hmm. If nothing happens from this conversation with me, a year from now, we will bring this same information yeah. back to this committee. And and you know, if something needs to happen, you know, more, you know, urgently to, to, to address this issue, we need to begin working on that as a staff to mm -hmm. to develop the proper yeah. plan and ordinance to to address this. So we can either bring it back to you and then ultimately if there's an ordinance amendment or anything that needs to happen that takes time and you know we're bumping up against a budget cycle um so on and so forth so so you know we don't we're not asking you're rushing this through or anything mm -hmm. it's just it is it is something that we need more guidance on because 
it's a significant, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a growing concern and it's not going to get any better, you know. Well, now this year's repairs are already underway, correct? They're all done. They're all done, okay. So this would be for 2022? Yes. Yeah. So I think now is the time to start, start going. talking about it we're so we're not scrambling. <laughs> yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that way you can plan um, moving forward, you know, creating the areas. Right. And if there are any budget implications, that can be incorporated into the budget discussions mm -hmm. for 2022. Yeah. So, and again, you said... You know, we still want to keep money in the oh, budget absolutely. for we have the to. city properties, but if there are additional, because you never know what's going to come up, if there are additional budget implications that can be incorporated to move this into 2022. Mm -hmm. and, and we would, if we have already thought of it, we would set up a set special revenue funds just for sidewalk assessments and repairs for, for private property. Sure. Because we just have to, we have no idea of what it's going to cost year one, two, three, and four. We just have, it could come back where it's, you know, we have no idea, you know, there could be. And, and they can give us estimates yep, on that, yep. uh, safe steps. I have talked to them. They can do a, a, an estimate. Uh, they'll take a sampling of uh, the sidewalks, and, and they'll be able to, to give us some data on that if that's what we want. Just to another thought and just mm -hmm. something to think about. Instead of four sections mm -hmm. in the city, perhaps it could be six if we aligned it with our garbage pickup then people know hey my garbage pickup up is on friday i'm in the fifth year yeah well and again that, just, that may you know that may be reasonable yeah you know or to, six i you know yeah. but you know if five, five with the garbage pickup thing makes sense that's yeah. You know, that's and we that use makes, the same highlighted area uh, of uh, the sheet I have uh, for the sheet I have. Okay, this one is, you know, who's going to be first? That'll be, is Monday always first or Friday first? I don't know, but. Drawing out of the hat. <laughs> but it can be done that way too. Well, it could be done with the area where, you know, through the assessment, what is the area like, of greatest, in, greatest need. need? Yeah, because that'll end up making it more cost efficient in the long run, right? To tackle if things. So if, if something can be ground down this year, as opposed to five, ten years from now, it would probably end up needing to be replaced because it's of the erosion more so. But the grinding should preserve it from completely shifting. Right in theory, it makes I think, it. I think it's going to shift either way, but but it'll be less of a um, it'll, it a danger. Um, okay. Of that. Ours looks lovely, <laughs> and the kids just zoom right over it with their scooter. <laughs> you need to so, consider three proposals. Not, I mean, I, I kind of love their detail. Don't get me wrong; this might be the best also by far. But you need to. Uh, let two other people give you their idea too, or not? On how it's done, or how it's well, proposed okay. costs, I guess. Oh, so we, yeah. So we have part of the whole project would be, you know, requesting proposals or bids for, for from contractors to do mm -hmm. this. Safe Step is an incredibly nice one-stop shop for grinds, and and they put this all together. Um, obviously. You know, some of their, their numbers are based on the industry that they're in because they do this in they're all, all over, over the, the state. I mean, they're one of the, the only ones that does sidewalk grinding. It's the only one I know yeah, that yeah, They'll come in and boom. Um, so, we'll, you know, part of it, if we're going to assess the, the cost, we have to bid it out and, and get the best price. And, and, and Safe Step will be in that, that conversation for having it bid out to get the best price. So... And the cement would be the same way. Yep, cement, yep, the same way replaced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fine. You guys got that Yeah. Yeah. We wish we, I, I mean, I wish we had data for like this every year, but this is the first year they've done it, and it's, it, and Mike would have to pull the spreadsheet or something. I don't know how they did it in the past, but. I don't have any data. Yeah. Um, I started with them in my second year, and I've been here three, so that's how much data I would 
only be able to collect. Yeah. You didn't walk the 49 miles to make sure it was correct? Or? I, it was 47, 47. though, but I, <laughs> I didn't quite make it either. <laughs> Double math, just to make sure. Well, and they do a nice job, like I said, documenting it. So, you, I mean, you can see the visual before and after to make sure that they're not out there just grinding away on something that either needs to be replaced or didn't need to be ground. So. Well, I'm sure that would probably make it easier, too, if there's any concerns or issues from a resident mm -hmm. having access to that yeah, it, it, it does help. Um, I've run into, um, you know, a complaint here, there, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have visual evidence um, that it was done. Yeah. Uh, you know, was it sure. cracked before? Was it not cracked before? I'm just throwing a couple things out there that I think of. But now we have pictures, and, and, and we know we can see what's going on. And I think, too, making it easier to understand what somebody may be talking about in trying to explain their concern when they are not well versed in Sidewalks. terminology or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk lingo. Yeah, yeah. You know, some people just don't know the, the health of their sidewalk and how to, so, you know, because I, I know I've, I've had a talk with a, a resident about, you know, repairs that were made. Mm -hmm. well, that makes it easy if I'm asking you a question. You know what I'm sure. I think yeah. that's, I mean, it can't hurt to have that additional. Okay, anything else on this topic? I don't have anything. Okay. All right, the last item that we have tonight is a city dump update. So, um, Jeff, did you want to ask the question um, back <laughs> on the other one, or do I want to just ignore that one? But no, I uh, go ahead to make it easier on the residents to perhaps obtain the ticket. More hours available. I mean, oh, I don't know if that's true or not true, but if someone wants to get the ticket, why not pick it up at City Hall? I, I don't know if people all, all know even where the utility building is. I mean, you can look at the website and figure it out. So a couple things on that when we we took a look at this. Um, um, you know, is that a safe place to travel down into? You guys? Yeah. Vehicles moving there. Oh yeah. Um, we wanted, one thing I wanted to have control over those tickets. Okay. The other one when Lori uh, was here, uh, she didn't want to put any more burden on the Karen at the front desk. So without um, an approval from the employee's boss, um, we didn't go that route. Since then, um, we found some ways, Adam had a way of putting a request in on the internet, right on our website, so you're able to submit a request there we get an email, all right? All they have to do is provide uh, proper uh, documentation and we mail it out. Mm -hmm. So it's become, and you'll see some of the data when I bring that um, here for disposal tickets. Um, might as well go into this. This is kind of the staff reports also. So we do track um, this information on there. Um, so the red ones are the yearly, uh, if you will, free tickets. Um, and we rolled this out probably the end of January or so. Uh, so uh, it took a little bit to get going. There might have been uh, some bumps in the road and some complaints we heard um, up front of access to those tickets. Uh, since we've changed uh, uh, that website, um, we've seen uh, a lot of uh, emails come in and be able to get those out that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I like that solution. Yeah. Good. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so the number of tickets uh, in blue are, are regular tickets that are sold um, for items to bring to the, the site. You can see the ups and downs on that. So I had asked Lisa to put together 
um, the number of uh, tickets issued and the number of tickets used is on the second sheet. Um, and these are specific to free dump tickets. So we got 56 of them out there and 22 of them have been used. Okay, on that, any questions? You want to see any different data? Um, I, I think it's good to at least get a, uh, you know, what's being used and, yeah. and yeah. you know, the level of it. Is it being used? And yes, it is. Okay. So, the city dump, city compost site, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, we've kind of been monitoring this and taking a look at it, and this has been a problem for years, and it's a problem. Um, these problems are not specific to Ripon that I'm going to mention. It's, it's all over. It, it, things are hard to get rid of nowadays. You just don't take them to the dump and throw them in. You know, it costs money to get rid of things. So some of the things that I've been seeing um, and that I've had direct contact with is... Um, People from outside the city buying a $25 ticket and bringing their stuff there to dump it. This is for residents only. Okay, now, if I was a city resident, I'm a township resident, we have some of the same things, but um, it's really, it's costing the residents more money by um, letting outside sources bring things in. Um, Tires show up. We don't accept tires, they still show up, so it costs us money to get rid of those. Railroad ties, we don't accept those. So we are seeing some illegal dumping. We are seeing non-residents come in, um, things like that. So we've been kicking around a couple things. Um, I know Green Lake, they had problems with um, people bringing stuff in that was they weren't residents either. Contractors were coming in, so they issued a little, uh, little sticker. You can go on the mirror. You can show it. Then you got access to it. No cost to anybody. You just gotta show your proof of residency. I have the same thing in the town of Brooklyn. So that's something that could be used. Um, Amro, they use. They actually have a sign-in sheet. You come in, you sign in, license number, what you're dumping off, so there's record of it. Um, those were a couple proposals that um, discussion amongst the crew came up with. So, um, you know, it, I don't expect pick and save an ace uh, to check residency. Um, so anybody can go there and buy a $25 ticket and bring in whatever they want. Um, so I just, that's what I'm seeing. I wanted to bring it forward. Our dump free dump tickets are not given at Ace or Webster's, correct? That is correct. Those are uh, strictly um, from my office. And so consequently then when there was issues regarding people not being able to access the office we went to an online situation which was a great compliment to showing up in person. Yep. What if those $25 tickets went the same route as the free tickets? So you're providing proof of residency to purchase? Yes. They could either purchase them through at the city public works building or online through the website. Um, I don't want them purchased at the city public works building. Okay. I don't want to collect money there. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Uh, they are available right here at City Hall. They are? Okay. Yep. Okay. But um, no, we should not be collecting any money uh, there. Uh, so they're available at City Hall? Yep. 
Is there a mechanism that they could also apply for them online? We don't have that mechanism, but it very well could be. Um, we Something we would have to work out with um, All right, keep people in the room. With Adam's crew, um, if that is the direction we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying we're doing on the free tickets or why not on the pay tickets? Is it that much different? Or? It is different. Um, and these processes are progressing. Um, oh, I see. No we literally just, when Adam came, I couldn't find what he had. He found on the, be able to put that feature in there. Um, so th this feature is basically a couple months in the works with the online. We also added it to um, brush pickup. So you can request your brush pickup online. Also. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's cool. You're welcome again. <laughs> yeah. We this. just needed a clue. It's like it's 2021. Look at this. Well, well, we're getting closer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it would seem to me that the likely source that of the outsiders buying the tickets to bring in stuff is they're they're not going to they're, they're not, not coming, coming here. Anymore. They're, they're going to Webster's, they're, yeah. they're going to Ace, they're yeah. buying them, and oh, but and they, they, is very, they have figured out the game. If you, yeah. if you get an online presence to do so, do you need pick and save in Ace anymore? It's very convenient for them. Um, for residents, they're, they go to pick and save, they go to Ace um, to get those. And um, they're open on weekends. They're open on evenings, weekends. It's very accessible. Um, I. I'm not sure that I would want to take that away from them. I, I would rather deal with the problem at the site. Okay. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think it's going to create a, a large uh, issue. So if we're not if we're not getting rid of in-person third-party vendor options for buying those tickets, then buying them online would just be a convenience as opposed to a deterrent, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So. And they're already very convenient. When yeah. You pick and save here. And on there. top of online, if we charge credit cards, it's going to cost more. Right. Right. You know, right. So it's, yeah, if people mm -hmm. know that, oh, if you buy it online, it's you have to prove your residency. They're going to keep doing what they've been doing. And yeah. So. Ultimately, it, you know, there are other ways we could tackle it, but as, as long as they're out in the public and people can buy them, not without showing residency, we now have to check that that resident, that that person who bought it is indeed a resident, which becomes a, a contentious issue for our staff sure. on site because right. somebody has paid $25 now and they want a refund and you're kicking them out and, and it just yeah. becomes a, 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 so so it's it's a it's a learning thing with it this year, I think, and, and um, but a sign-in sheet or, or just tracking it is something that I think we have to do because it is getting abused. And as long as we want to provide, provide that access out from third-party vendors, we're going to have to control it down there a little bit eat, you know, better. So. so is the problem with people bringing in yard waste and those type of things, or is the problem really with the, the $25 ticket? That's where the problem lies? Right now, it's with the $25 ticket. Uh, we have uh, weeded out the uh, tree contractors yep. uh, from bringing their things there that they're not supposed to do. Okay. Um, that was a problem that Green Lake had with contractors dumping their, you know, right. cutting a tree down and then bringing the stuff there. Um, that's not the purpose of, of the site. Um, and what helped with Green Lake was, was providing that sticker. Um, because the contractors caught on that if you come in with a no signage vehicle, not saying Joe's tree right. service on, um, you could get away with dumping. Um, so providing that sticker um, to a resident um, started elimin it did eliminate that. I feel like that just adds an extra step of oh I didn't know I don't have that right. Like, where am I, how am I supposed to get my sticker? Well, we can issue the sticker right at the site. 
Okay. Um, you show your driver's license for residency and, and you hand a, hand a sticker. Okay. I mean, Al comes out there and the guy knows Al, he's probably just, here's your sticker, okay? okay. I know you're resident. But now somebody's going out there and they've purchased a ticket. Now they're already out there. They don't have that sticker, but now you have the, well, you're not a resident. They don't have that, yeah. So then they can't, so can you just put a disclaimer on the ticket that says, I was going to without look, proof of residency, dump items may not be accepted. I'm not this. sure how those are written, if it okay. says resident only, um, but I will check with Lisa on that. But it, it's, even with that, And you still have to turn people away, but if it mm -hmm. says something about, like, refunds will not be issued due to mm -hmm. non-residency proof, you know, yeah. no proof of residency. Yeah, and I can make sure that's on there, um, but it's not going to deter them from stopping. Right, but, so. the, but if they, you know, then they can be turned away, though, if they, you know, they I have I can the still ticket. turn them away because they're not a resident. Right. I sent them back. So, so then... You know they've spent their twenty five dollars, but yeah. they it says. I told them I would refund it. I says take it to city hall and we'll refund okay. it. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple things I was also thinking about if would it make sense to have the camera out there to get the license plate so you at least you got some kind of a chain of custody. I have the camera out the, there and the township friend could have used his truck to help someone in town, and I get that, and that's fine. But it's sometimes good to know well who was out here at ten a.m. on Saturday. The other thing is, if you're going to start checking people, do you need to get the check-in a little farther in? Because you got three vehicles off of Old Berlin Road, and no one can turn in if there's a hold-up. Yeah, we, we can move that in farther. We can do some things there uh, for the access point, yes. Um, it could get backed up with the sign-in sheet, mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, the camera is a tough one. I tried it, um, and you're searching through a lot of pictures. Um, recorded live data would be better, but we don't have Wi-Fi out there. Um, so, but um, and I, I, I don't want to put the burden onto my guy. No, you um, need some confrontation. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my crew doesn't seem, some of them don't seem to mind that, um, but people can get pretty irate. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to stay yeah. away from that, but yeah. by providing some, um, some way of doing something different. And we don't have to do anything now, um, but if we're going to do anything, I think we start at the first of the year mm -hmm. with something like that. So. Unless you want to try something, I don't know. We have been checking license plates and licenses. Okay. So. Well, perhaps we can think about it and keep this on the agenda. If you want to bring that back and go from there. If I may also add, I I gotta say, Mike, I'm impressed with the dump site. I, the last few years, it's noticeable to me when you pull in there on a Saturday that it's much more orderly. Yeah. And open and, there were, and not that it was ever horrible before, but it just looks more clean and efficient. And yeah, Chris like, Newins, the supervisor, is doing a great job out there, and, and some of the other people that help out there. Um, so um, we are compliant now with the DNR. Uh, on our compost and things like that, so um, that's huge. Um, we are getting rid of our compost um, appropriately and uh, not having too much of that also. And so um, I think there's some other improvements that can be made out there. Um, and I have some ideas on that too, but one piece at a time. But thanks, Jeff. I'll let the guys know. <laughs> Girls, guys, team. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Anything else, Mike, as far as updates, reports? 
anything along uh, those No. Um, you know, uh, we did, uh, one thing that I was going to bring up is the Calvarium. You may have seen it on Facebook. Um, the cement was poured at the Calvarium. Um, I did not get any pictures. It looks amazing. Um, and the next step in the process is that uh, Bill Neal will be bringing a, uh, a design um, to the team, to us here, uh, for shrubs or whatever to enhance that area. That's all I have. Well done. Um, any suggestions at this time for agenda items for the next meeting? One, I mentioned this the first time I was, we ever had one of these meetings, the double poles where utilities put a new pole up and then cable and phone stayed on a smaller one next door to it. And I realize that's not easy to get them to clean that matter up, but I think it's tacky. It's a poor image in the community and there ought to be some peer pressure to say there's some professional behavior you should follow if you're the phone company and the cable. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that to them. I mean, I understand from Power Light that they say we can abandon the old pole and tell them we will do so, and then sometimes they'll jump off because they don't want to take care of it. I don't know where that ever got left off because I talked to Alliance about doing that, and they said they had given them that signal, but that they didn't do anything, and they said, well, we're just, we're considering them. I suppose they were saying we're considering them abandoned, but and then phone and cable. And I'm not saying it's just phone and cable. I don't know who's on that lower pole, but I assume it's them or well, Alliance. It's, it, it's Alliance. not Alliant Energy's um, power that's on there. Right. They're on the new pole. So, so it's got to be them or Communication, somewhere. things like that um, right. are probably on those those shortened poles. I mean, can we at least give them a letter saying, isn't there a level of professional decorum that says we don't need two poles right two feet apart? You know, yeah, we, we can send them a letter. See if, it, see if it helps. I mean, I don't know. I, I just, to me, it's tacky. Maybe it's only me, but it's Oshkosh Street, it's Hamburg. I, there's probably other places. I, I don't know. Those two streets, they are how I come and go from work every day, so I see them. And, but, um, I mean, it's so odd. Some places they did take the lower pole out, and others, you know, so you'll see the double pole, three poles in that one. Is it like right here? Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, right down there. Yeah. Yeah, right on the corner. I mean, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. I, mean, it's I was just, trying to visualize and it wasn't. I can't imagine it's that hard to climb up there and move the line. But I really need to class to everything, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's got to be six or eight of them up Hamburg and then Oshkosh all the, all the way down, yeah, all the way down from almost the whole side. I'm going to notice that everybody yeah, Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> now I guess, everybody knows. I guess, I mean, it just looks, the paper cut. <laughs> it just looks bad, I think, but whatever. Just my opinion. <clears throat> okay, anything else? I don't. But as always, if you have uh, something comes up and you would like to see it on the agenda, you can certainly let Mike know, you can let Adam know, you can let me know, and we will make sure that it gets on the agenda. Um, our next meeting date, um, Karen is usually good about rallying the troops and, and those type of things. So um, that works really well, mm -hmm. um, depending if we have you know a substantial agenda or not. So um, we will have her continue to do that. Uh, it works well for everybody involved. And if there's nothing else, we need one last motion. I would so move to adjourn. I will second. And we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 48, 48 minutes. We're pretty close. 50. <laughs>